Welcome to Wealth Masters University introductory video, Finding Your Sweet Spot and Preparing for Success and Achievement. I ask not divine providence for more riches, but for more wisdom to accept and use wisely the riches that I received at birth in the form of the power to control and direct my mind to whatever ends I desire. Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. Well, hello, I'm Rodney Warren here, and welcome to Wealth Masters University. I'm so happy that you've arrived and have invited us to share with you. The saying that Mr. Hill just said, or proverb, if you will, is the whole basis for what this university is all about. It's really our mantra. We're here to help you arrive at success through universal truths and understandings to reshape and direct your mind and your paradigms, your thoughts and habits to thoughts of prosperity, and to give you practical and useful action plans to create online or offline business and personal success. In fact, each and every month for a six-month period, you'll receive one kick-butt content-rich video plus bonus downloads and action plans per month. We will cover mindset and personal development as well as marketing and business development. When you're finished, you'll receive a non-accredited yet very nice Wealth Masters University graduation certificate and also a very special surprise for all who stick it out for the six-month period. Some of you here today are here as part of a special one-time offer that went alongside a book that I wrote called Find Your Place by Following Your Passions, Thoughts for Today's Happiness and Success for a Lifetime. In that book in MP3, we talk about the need to start to think differently than before. We need to do things differently. We have to have mental disciplines and a burning desire to succeed. Also, we have to know without a doubt what it is that we want to achieve. Because what my, your mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Without knowing uh, what we want and where we want to go, it makes it virtually impossible to get there. Kind of like a ship with no captain or crew at the helm. At this point, I'm going to assume that everybody involved here has some goals set out and a little belief and certainty in themselves in which to dive into some greater lessons. Some of you may be fed up, sick and tired of the way that life is going, and after long struggling have decided that enough is enough, and that this will be a turning point in your life for better. Maybe you're a ways along your journey of developing yourself for success, and maybe you're successful already, and really enjoy the study and application of timeless principles to further you on your journey. In any case, I promise that if you study, take to heart and apply what is here at Wealth Masters University, you'll be miles ahead of the pack and start to live and continue to live a life that was meant to be lived with more comfort, beauty, joy, creative expression, financial freedom, and all the ingredients of success. Today, I want to share a few concepts. One is to help you realize that we can actually manifest things into our lives with the power of our thoughts, and also another concept and reality that we have to be working in to be successful in any endeavor, including business, is that we need to be working in our sweet spot. After these very important pieces, I'd like to help further prepare your mind and soul for success, really prepare you for the success-seeking battle ahead that many are already fighting with a story called The Warrior's Credo. As in any university, you'll need to write things down, so get out a pen and paper, and we'll be back to look at some critical self-discovering elements. The Bowels. Let's start in then with a little story of Wallace D. Waddles and his book, The Science of Getting Rich. First, a little about Mr. Waddles. Wallace Deloitte Waddles was born in the United States in 1860 and lived until 1911, shortly after his 1910 publication of his book, The Science of Getting Rich. When you have read and implemented the principles laid out in The Science of Getting Rich in your own life, you'll see that all the success and personal development literature of the last 90 years owes a great debt of gratitude to Mr. Waddles. Although Mr. Waddles' work had been largely forgotten. The people who have studied and applied these principles have experienced remarkable results. They have all gotten rich. Now I'm going to read the first two chapters of The Science of Getting Rich, two of 17 chapters. To put these chapters into full context, you must read the other chapters. But these chapters fit for the foundation of the studies of this series. 
Now I recorded this little reading um, separately and I'm going to put it into this video. So let's go ahead and watch that now. So gather on in everybody. We're going to read the first two chapters of The Science of Getting Rich. So I quote, Whatever may be said in praise of poverty, the facts remains that it is not possible to live a really complete or successful life unless one is rich. No one can rise to his greatest possible height in talent or soul development unless he has plenty of money for to unfold the soul and to develop talent, he must have many things to use. And he cannot have these things unless he has money to buy them with. A person develops in mind, soul, and body by making use of things. And society is so organized that man must have money in order to become the possessor of things. Therefore, the basis of all advancement must be the science of getting rich. The object of all life is development, and everything that lives has an inalienable right to all the development it is capable of attaining. A person's right to life means his right to have the free and unrestricted use of all the things which may be necessary to his fullest mental, spiritual, and physical unfoldment, or, in other words, his right to be rich. In this book, I shall not speak of riches in a figurative way. To be really rich does not mean to be satisfied or contented with little. No one ought to be satisfied with little if he is capable of using and enjoying more. The purpose of nature is the advancement and unfoldment of life, and everyone should have all that can contribute to the power, elegance, beauty, and richness of life. To be content with less is sinful. The person who owns all he wants for the living of all he is capable of living is rich, and no person who has not plenty of money can have all he wants. Life has advanced so far and become so complex that even the most ordinary man or woman requires a great amount of wealth in order to live in a manner that even approaches completeness. Every person naturally wants to become all they are capable of becoming. This desire to realize innate possibilities is inherent in human nature. We cannot help wanting to be all that we can be. Success in life is becoming what you want to be. You can become what you want only by making the use of things. And you can have the free use of things only as you become rich enough to buy them. To understand the science of getting rich is therefore the most essential of all knowledge. There is nothing wrong with wanting to get rich. The desire for riches is really the desire for a richer, fuller, and more abundant life. And that is a praiseworthy desire. The person who does not desire to live more abundantly is abnormal, and so the person who does not desire to have money enough to buy all he wants is abnormal. There are three motives for which we live. We live for the body, we live for the mind, and we live for the soul. No one of these is better or holier than the other. All are alike desirable, and no one of these three, body, mind, or soul, can live fully if either of the others is cut short of the full life of expression. It is not right or noble to live only for the soul and deny the body or mind. And it is wrong to live for the intellect and deny the body or soul. We are all acquainted with the loathsome consequences of living for the body and denying both mind and soul. And we see that real life means the complete expression of all that a person can give forth through body, mind, and soul. Whatever he can say, no one can be really happy or satisfied unless his body is living fully in its every function, and unless the same is true of his mind and soul. Wherever there is unexpressed possibility or function not performed, there is unsatisfied desire. Desire is possibility seeking expression or function seeking performance. A person cannot live fully in the body without good food, comfortable clothing, and warm shelter and without freedom from excessive toil. Rest and recreation are also necessary to his physical life. One cannot live fully in mind without books and time to study them, without opportunity for travel and observation, or without the intellectual companionship. To live fully in mind, a person must have intellectual recreations and must surround himself with all the objects of art and beauty he is capable of using and appreciating. To live fully in soul, a person must have love 
and love is denied fullest expression by poverty. A person's highest happiness is found in the bestowal of benefits on those he loves. Love finds its most natural and spontaneous expression in giving. The individual who has nothing to give cannot fill his place as a spouse or parent, as a citizen or as a human being. It is in the use of material things that a person finds full life for his body, develops his mind, and unfolds his soul. It is therefore of supreme importance to each individual to be rich. It is perfectly right that you should desire to be rich. If you're not a normal man or woman, you cannot help in doing so. It is perfect right that you should give your best attention to the science of getting rich, for it is the noblest and most necessary of all studies. If you neglect this study, you are derelict in your duty to yourself, to God and to humanity, for you can render to God and humanity no greater service than to make the most of yourself. So that's the end of chapter one. Interesting stuff, but true. Thank you.